I, I, I find it a little weird. Uh, with that, I, I try, I'm trying here now not to sound partisan <laughs> in any way because it's very hard to speak for one party and not necessarily sound like you're talking for the other. Yeah. But you know, every time I've mentioned the fact that why is he not coming up, mm. people say, but Mr. President wasn't like to debate in and 2011. So what? And I say, but you stand for change. Exactly. Are you supposed to be learning from the... Like, I'm not really sure how that works. That so doesn't you, make any sense. And you get, you're quite right. You get a lot of that on Twitter. And, and I say that I mean, somebody was tweeting the other day and talked about if you think you have the advantage, the debate is not, then you don't, you have a choice in a sense to participate or not. But I'm saying that the debate is not about the candidates. It's about Nigerians who want a debate. So I don't care if you think you're leading, not leading, if it's to your advantage, not your advantage. Nigerian citizens want the opportunity to listen to both of you talk. And I mean, we, I mean, you have your spokespeople daily abusing each other, insults across the papers, across the radio waves. This is an opportunity to just really address issues and focus on policy issues, not abuse and, and really things that make no sense. <laughs> Do you think the town halls have actually helped in any way? I think the town halls, in honesty, might have helped in terms of parts. Because at the end of the day, if I'm a citizen that don't decide, it will take a lot for me to go to a town hall. I think it's helped maybe party faithful, so people who are borderline actually show up and want to listen. People have some interest. You have to have some interest to actually physically go to a town hall. Not all the town halls are televised, so you, people also don't have you the don't opportunity, have opportunity to see. But the beauty of a debate is that it, it gets it's we televised live, not yeah. only on TV but also on radio. So the audience is. It's a lot. It's a lot larger. Yeah. Actually, we also pitched a virtual debate. Um, so they, no, they don't necessarily have to be in the same place. Exactly. <laughs> Just be in different rooms with Google, Facebook, Twitter. Skype, we can do every with, time, whatever it is you want. And we'll have a conversation. <laughs> We're still waiting. Interesting. I, I, I was talking. I wanted to talk about maybe the culture of debates. It's not necessarily new here because no. we've had one. We've had one in other republics yeah. before the current republic we're in. I know in the UK, Mr. Um, Cameron. David Cameron has said he's not going to participate in one. But I know debates in the UK are very new yeah. because they're on a parliamentary system. So it's not necessarily about the candidates. It's more about parties. Party. And they're debating constantly. And they're debating on the constantly, floor, anyways, anyway. in the house. There's exactly. the PMQs that happens every yeah. Monday or something. Right. So, is it a culture thing? Because almost every year we have elections, we seem to have one candidate not showing up mm. or one giving excuses. Is it a culture thing? At the heart of it, I mean, one, our system is more the U.S. presidential system and debates. I mean, Which there's a schedule. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and there's a schedule and you <laughs> must show up at them. I think part of it is at the heart of it, people don't feel like debates affect their, um, their votes. So it, it takes someone who either, either is committed to the idea of democracy or, or really has confidence in who they are and what they have to offer and is, and are will, is willing to let that, um, let that forward. I mean, Kaduna is a, a different parallel, for example. The APC candidate, I mean, they keep asking me, so when's the debate? But the opponent doesn't want to come on. So it's a flip, it's flip side in Kaduna. So you have the different states. And I, I mean, I think two days ago, they still asked, are we still having this debate in Kaduna or not? I was like, well, you can't debate yourself. Yes, so unfortunately, we won't be able to do it. So I think it's also depending on the person and the understanding of what a debate allows me to do and how it allows me to yeah. present. So I don't think it's, I think when we get to a point, I mean, for example, this debate, if we have a lot more citizens crying out, sort of making a big deal out of it, maybe they would respond. Because mm. at the heart of it, a rally is one-sided. You stand on a podium, and you, you shout, just talk and talk and talk without necessarily getting any reaction. I was watching yeah. um, Sunrise Daily during the week, and mm. one of the guests actually mentioned about maybe legislating it. Is that something we should look at? It was discussed as part of the, I think, CONFAB, and, or either the CONFAB or the Constitutional Review, but it didn't make it in. Would you support <laughs> something like that? Do you think it should um, be, I mean, it's, it should it be uh, mandatory? mandatory? It, um, I mean, at this point, I almost <laughs> want to say yes. yes. So it just saves all of us all this drama. <laughs> but I mean, for a, for a growing democracy, maybe. And then after a while, when people get used to it, you might toss it out of, of whatever document it is. Yeah. But why, why, really, why not? Why not give citizens an opportunity to, to hear you speak? Yeah. Yeah. Let's let's leave the debates now because I can go on and on because I mean it's I really want I know you're very interested in debates yeah. and I, I mean for once we have two major parties it would have been nice to actually see them actually you know let me talk to them. I mean look at what happened with even the youth one how exactly. it was talked how, about what, because people offline were, like and the first online. people were excited about seeing both so parties actually engage when the principles such a lost opportunity it man. It, it, it's it, not it, too it, late it, by the way I'm looking at the cameras it's not too late we still have we can have one on the 27th see and you're looking for a neutral platform look at both of us do we look like Really, though. I mean, I was really? pretty neutral last week. Uh, I, yeah. be, <laughs> I can blame my own trumpet now. <laughs> Let's leave debates now and move on to... But to, enough is enough Nigeria right. now. And you guys, there's this concert culture that you also have. Yeah. Where you have concerts, you bring on artists to talk to youth, uh, the youth and all of that. What is the purpose? What, what purpose does that serve? with spreading your message. message. Well, it was funded, it is funded by um, yeah, one of our funders, Osiwa, uh, Open Society Initiative for West Africa. And the idea was to try and use entertainment um, 
to leverage or to push the message. From 2011, we've had support of um, Nigerian celebrities for our RSVP message. So Two Face, YJ, Omaumi, um, Omotola have really lent their voices to sort of encouraging young people to go out and, and participate in the process. So the idea was let's have a concert. Um, we encourage you to pick up your PVC or go and register because it allows you. Sorry, I just I'm my really, eyes. I know. <laughs> I'm really sorry. We encourage you to pick it up because it gets you in for free. Yeah. And if you don't have it, you pay a token. And it's really fun. I mean, it's a concert music, but in between, the artists then use that opportunity to sort of re reiterate the message of participating, um, peaceful participation, what, why elections are important, and why, why those who are there should, should attend. And how's, um, the, how's the response been so far? It's been great for the most part. I think Joss and um, Oweri were probably one of our better cities. Um, in Oweri, we had Two Face and Frank Edwards, who happened to be, who was an INEC ambassador as well. So I think it was interesting. It was also a very interesting shift because Frank is a, more of a gospel artist. And yeah. it, was more, it was quite nice how the audience was quite in church one minute. <laughs> With Two Face. Frank, <laughs> Frank did his thing, said his <laughs> message, and encouraged. And then Two Face came on and everybody partied. So it was, it was nice. It's been good. So it's been five years now. Yeah. Before we talk about your achievements, the things you were fighting for in 2010, do you see a difference now? Are they the same issues you're still agitating for? Have things gotten worse? I think same issues, yes, in terms of um, governance and accountability. So that's a continuous journey as, that would always our, be there. as, a, as a democracy evolves. Yeah. But I think what has definitely improved without a doubt is citizen engagement. Because at the heart of it, it's really not about politicians or government or criticizing them. It's really, at the end of the day, um, I think one of my favorite quotes, I'm going to paraphrase, basically says, of all the democratic institutions, the most powerful are awakened and aware citizens. That the more citizens you have who understand their rights and responsibilities, who understand how government is meant to work, who understand that my senator is there to serve me, yeah. that he's technically my employee. Now, when citizens begin to think that way, the dynamic between those who govern us and citizens will change. And yeah. that really is at the heart of what we do. I know you're very passionate about the whole active citizen yes, thing. Thank you. It's something that Enough is Enough Nigeria also you know, likes to push. Yeah. And I'm, like you said, we're definitely at a different place now yeah. where people are more active about politics. People are having conversations. It's almost impossible to sit with a Nigerian now for five minutes. Five, and, and two minutes. In less than straight. a minute, you are talking about yeah. APC, PDP, I mean, there's something so, always comes up. Yeah. Do, should we be looking more now at more partisan citizens? Hmm. Yes and no. I think, I mean, a party would only, because people complain, for example, about candidates that are in, running for office oh, we can do better, why do we have this person, why do we have that person? That person? But this, at the system of government that we have, you need to be a member of a political party to run for office. So if you have a problem with the candidates in party A, I'll suggest you join party A. And that's the only way that's going to change. To fix it. To fix it. So the more people who go in and participate in partisan politics, you change your crop of people available for public service. However, you also do need, I mean, at, at any point in time, only a very small percentage of Nigerians will be in public office or will be members of a political party. Yeah. But most of us can be active citizens. And that really doesn't take a lot. But we tend to focus a lot more on those in government and take the responsibility from ourselves in how we engage and how we relate to, to um, society. Yeah. Yeah. Be before we go on, I want to talk about your shirts. I mean, oh, yes. people might see your shirt and think you're invited us to a party. Oh, <laughs> it's no. not rice and stew very plenty, not is quite. it? <laughs> it's RSVP. It's the main campaign that we've run for the last five years. And really everything that we do falls under RSVP. So R stands for register, so encouraging people to participate. And that's where a lot of the concept is about. S is select a credible candidate, and that's where debates come in. So pay attention to what they're saying. If you get an opportunity to listen to a debate or participate, um, do that. V is vote, go, down, go out on election day and vote. And then P is protect your vote. So on election day, it's Revoda. You're using that app to protect your vote on election day. And then in the four years in between, it's really just um, paying attention. And that's where the engagement, the active and citizenship, keeping and toes. keeping them on their toes, that's where that comes in. OK, very quickly now, how are we celebrating this five years? Anything planned? Well, it's actually tomorrow. So it'll be, tomorrow will be the fifth year of the protest of the National Assembly. We're having a tweet meet on, um, well, a chat on Twitter. Uh, Jaffa Tomodua will be interviewing Shion Kuti, talking about active citizenship and the role of citizens. And sometime in April after elections, we'll probably do a public lecture, just really unveiling this new direction of office of the citizen, what Mrs. Ezekiel Sili calls the office of the citizen. And for her, she describes it as the most important office, not the office of the president, but office of the citizen, because at the end of the day, 
everybody who's in office is there to serve me as a citizen. I like that. I always like that. Yeah, but, yeah. Very interesting. How do we follow this conversation, sorry? Is oh, tomorrow it's hashtag is um, EIE at 5 or, and JJ asks Shim. But follow EIE at 5 tomorrow afternoon at 5 p.m. And um, we'll give you more updates about the anniversary in April as well. Thank you very much, Yemi. Thank you. Just to 5, 10, 15, 20 more years of an office let's, in Nigeria. Let's Hopefully see. Hopefully that's work for you. Let's work, yes. <laughs> definitely. But I think, as you said, we'll always yeah. need to have active citizenship, but hopefully the work will decrease over time. I'll sort of look at, look at other areas, yeah. go to secondary schools and do some other stuff. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks we'll a lot. We'll see you again soon. Yeah, I'm sure. We'll be right back with more. Please stay with us.